Well, hi campers, this is Darren with My RV Works. And today what I wanna to talk to you about is refrigerators, specifically Dometic refrigerators, but this will apply to any. Um, but specifically it's the absorption refrigerator. Uh, if, if your RV has a residential refrigerator, then you could watch this just for amusement. But what we're really focusing on today is the absorption refrigerator, which we find in, refri in RVs. These are the refrigerators that have the ability to run on LP gas or electricity. Some of you might even have a refrigerator that is called a three-way, which, which can work on DC. Uh, you have the insulated box with the door. That's the part that you see. But there's a whole other world on these refrigerators, and that's behind these vents that we see behind me here. Um, if you think of a refrigerator more as a heating appliance than as, than as a cooling appliance, it's gonna help make sense on some of the things that we're gonna be talking about. I know that for me, when I'm working on these things, I, I, I become the refrigerator and I visualize the heat. The boiler is a part of the refrigerator that's gonna get really hot. Um, most of the time they're on the, on the right side, but depending on your configuration, it might be on the left. Different um, model numbers have them in different places, but it's a boiler, you're gonna look at it. It's like a chimney looking thing going up. The cooling unit, let me mention that for a second. The cooling unit is a, um, it's a totally sealed under pressure vessel. And it's got four elements in it. Ammonia, water, hydrogen, and sodium chromate. The sodium chromate is an anti-rust inhibitor, so we can kind of forget about him because he's not gonna, he's not involved in the physics of how these things work. But the water, the ammonia, and the hydrogen, they do work very interactively together. Then you have to have heat and gravity. It's a gravity system. We need to have an adequate amount of heat. Um, so we need to make sure that our heating element is a correct wattage. Um, and so let me just mention that. And also that we have proper insulation of our refrigerator. So when I talk about that, then that gets into the, the next thing of ventilation. If it is a heating appliance, we have to get outside ambient air into the bottom. That's why it's louvered and vented, brought inside like a chimney. It's got to scrub the heat off of the cooling unit coils in the back, the absorber coil, the condenser fin up at the top. It's got to scrub the heat off and then vacate out of either the top of the RV, if your RV is, if your refrigerator is not in a slide room, or if your RV is, if, if, if your refrigerator is in a slide room, then it needs to come in, go up, make a right-hand turn, exit stage left, um, or right, whatever. <laughs> so, and we're gonna get into all those topics when we're talking about this. Ventilation is very important for this. So as creating a chimney, you don't wanna have any heat breaches because you'll have uh, areas of uh, pockets of, of heat where it, it, it can not have that perfect good flow. If you cannot scrub the heat off the back of your cooling unit, you're never gonna absorb the heat inside your refrigerator and you're never gonna have cold food and frozen food, okay? Now, I mentioned ventilation. What I mean by that is we need to create a chimney. So when your refrigerator is, is in its place, inserted into the wall, in, into its hole, uh, there should be absolutely zero air flowing from the outside to the inside of your coach for several reasons. Um, there could be combustion back here and you don't want that combustion to work itself inside the RV. You'll also find this on your um, furnace and on your water heater. Uh, all of these appliances need to be totally separate from the living space to the outside. So um, on this refrigerator, we want zero clearance between the walls, the side of the refrigerator, zero clearance between the, the side of the refrigerator and the wall. If there's a gap, fill it in with insulation, okay? On both sides. On the top, zero clearance on the top. That's really bad if you have the air coming up and it's got this little swirly thing going up on the top. Uh, if your refrigerator is in a slide room, they do have some baffle kits that we're going to be discussing that are going to come through the condenser fin. We're going to get into that in just a few minutes, and they're going to force the air to go through. We're going to talk about how those baffles must work if your refrigerator is in a slide room. Most of the problems I've seen on refrigerator cooling performance issues is on refrigerators and slide rooms, and we're going to get into why in just a few minutes. So we've talked about zero clearance on the sides, zero clearance on the top. You need a baffle if your refrigerator's in a slide room. Well, what about the back wall? We want less than a one inch clearance from the back of your fins, uh, the back of your absorber coil and the whole side, less than one inch from the back of the cooling unit to the back wall of the refrigerator. If it's greater than a one inch, air has a tendency to be kind of lazy and it's gonna take the path of least resistance and it's gonna come in the bottom fin and just zip right on past everything, never scrubbing the heat off and therefore you're gonna have cooling performance issues. So you need to verify that zero on the sides, zero on the top, if you're in a slide room, a baffle, we're gonna talk about that in a second for those of you with refrigerators and slide rooms and no more than a one inch gap on the back. 
So the thermistor is a thing inside your food compartment. It's gonna be attached to the fins inside your food compartment. Depending on the refrigerator model you have will determine if the thermistor is on the left, the right, or in the center and how many fins over it is. The thermistor is a resistor that changes resistance based on temperature. Okay, so as the temperature inside your food compartment increases and decreases, that thermistor is sending a ohms value resistance to the control board, telling the control board, hey, I'm too warm, I'm too cold, and I need to start the boiler or stop the boiler, these types of things. That is how the control board knows what it's, if it's having any effect, is through that thermistor. With that, uh, let me bring you in a little bit closer and start pointing out some of the things that we've discussed, okay? Now what I'm going to do now is bring you in closer. I've got a light in here to kind of illuminate a little bit more of what we're looking at. Um, over here we have the control board. A couple different styles of control boards. Uh, this one has an, a, a separate igniter on it. So if you're working on your, D, on your LP side, this igniter will come into play. I'll do another video on how to diagnose this part. If we look up here, we have our electric heating element. Now, this right here is an important feature. Um, if this boiler gets too hot, this trips itself, so you'll need to reset this push button. Um, that would be an indication that your whole control board would not work because the 12 volts that's feeding the control board passes through this. Also, down back in the back back there, uh, we do have a, a high limit fuse uh, that, that will, will trip. So again, follow the 12 volts because this fuse back here is fed First it comes through here, goes through this um, high limit thermostat, and then it feeds the board. So those are two little things you gotta watch out for, the high limit fuse back here, the temperature fuse, and the high limit thermostat, okay? So what we have here on the side, I wanted to show you, this has got a zero clearance on the side, on this side, and if we pan over to this side, it's got a zero clearance on this side. So it's passed those two tests, okay? And if we pan up to the top, We'll notice that this manufacturer put a, a a baffle, if you will. So air is coming up, it's hitting this baffle, and it's being forced to go through the absorber coils right here. Uh, if this baffle was not here, then the air would be drawn in, and I would have like a foot distance between the back wall and the absorber coil. And we know that air is lazy, it's just going to take this path right here because it's a path of least resistance, and it's going to vent up to the top. Uh, never going through the absorber coil, therefore we're never going to scrub the heat off the absorber coil, therefore we're never going to have a cool refrigerator okay um, now while we're back here we look at our drip hose um, right here uh, I like to put a little bit of a p-trap in it to collect the condensate and um, uh, you don't have to some people do some people don't I just think it makes a lot of sense and then make sure that you have this little insect cap on the back or you might, possibly you might even get critters in your refrigerator um, the reason I do this little drip tray is because if I blow into this this the other end of this drip tray actually goes to the uh, I'm sorry the actually the other end of this hose actually goes to the the drip tray inside your refrigerator and if there's no low spot no P trap if you will it's very possible that that will collect uh, uh, that any humidity or any more um, warm air or whatever that's outside can actually work its way inside of the refrigerator. It's kind of like a, an air breach, if you will. So by putting a P-trap in there, I get a low spot, holds water, and um, it just makes sense to me. So I wanted to show you on the back of this. Now here we have your absorber vessel, your absorber uh, coils here. Uh, these are kind of warm because I've had the refrigerator running for a little bit. Uh, another thing you can do is if your refrigerator has been running for a while, feel if these tubes are warm back here. Uh, these tubes should be warm, okay? If we've got 360 degree temperature boiler on this side and it's working correctly and it's working itself around, these should get pretty warm. Now these are warm so therefore I have a properly functioning refrigerator, okay? Uh, if it's not functioning then we might get them to be a little cool and that would indicate that uh, I don't have good circulation. Now what I want to do now is I want to talk about the baffle kit that would be on the top that you might find on a slide out refrigerator. Most of the service calls I go on are for refrigerator performance issues for refrigerators that are in slide rooms. So let's see here, let's visualize. Okay, so here is gonna be my slide room. There's gonna be the main body of the RV. Uh, my refrigerator is gonna be right here, about right there, okay. And then I'm going to have an upper vent and a lower vent, right? Isn't this about what you have on your RV right there, an upper vent and a lower vent? So here's my lower vent and here is my upper vent. Now, we were talking about air coming in. Um, 
air is going to come in and it's going to do that with me. Okay, that's what we want it to do. But we need that air to do work. So let me get rid of my blue lines because I need to develop this a little bit better. If you capture this idea, you'll become an expert on refrigerators. What we have at the bottom is the absorber vessel and we have the absorber the roller coaster thing. Okay, it goes into the refrigerator here. This is going to be the fins that are in your refrigerator food compartment. Here is a divider between your fresh fruit and your freezer. In the freezer, you have this thing we call in the trades called the cat box, which is about three inch thick solid foam. And it's got all these uh, tubes that go in it. On the other side of my drawing is the boiler and the boiler leaves and goes through these fins right here. I'll draw them like that. And uh, it leaves the fins and what we've created is a distillery. We're trying to get the ammonia out of the water and the ammonia is going to have a liquid component and a vapor component. It's the vapor component that we want to go in the cat box because that's where it meets up with hydrogen. And back in the 1800s, I guess somebody liked cold beer and they figured out that, hey, if you take a vapor, ammonia vapor and hydrogen, you get a minus 128 degree reaction. Yee So what we're having here is that the, as that hydrogen, as the ammonia comes in and wets those coils and the hydrogen meets up with it, rapid expansion or um, a rapid evaporation. And when you have evaporation, you have rapid cooling. So it gets to minus 120 to minus 22 on these coils here. And by the time it gets down to the refrigerator fins, it might be 20 or, or so, okay? A uh, lot of variables, but just conceptually, that's what's going on here. So in order for this whole thing to happen, so it absorbs the heat and it works itself through here. This is where the hydrogen falls out of solution and the ammonia gets drawn back into the water. So what I wanna talk about is a baffling. So I'm gonna use red for baffling. Let's force the baffling. Remember how we said less than a one inch gap? I want to develop this top part a little bit better. I'm going to take this right here and I'm going to develop it right there. Okay. Here's the top of my refrigerator. Okay. And, and here's the side wall. I could do a little bit better than that. Here's the side wall that the upper vent of my slide room. Okay. So you with me on here? I've taken this little drawing and I've made it bigger. Okay. Uh, so here would be my fins at the top. Okay. My condenser fins at the top. Now let me go back to blue. Here comes blue air. If I don't put any kind of a baffle, blue air is going to come up and go right out and we've just wasted everybody's time. You're never going to have an efficient refrigerator. So let's get rid of blue. Now I'm going to use red for my baffle. Here's red. What we need to do is take this baffle and go up about a quarter of an inch to the touching the fins. And we're going to come down and make sure that we're going to force the air to the fins. Now there's another part of the baffle and there's a baffle kit. I don't know the part number offhand, but it, it's going to force it to curl right there and connect to the top of the vent. So now what we've done, that's the how you must have it done. Air is going to come in here. Oh, I have to go through here. I have to do work. I'm going to go through my fins and then I'm going to come out. Thereby, we're scrubbing the heat off of the condenser fin and I don't have I'll use green for bad air. I don't have all this air getting caught up on top and just really making a big mess of things. I want nice air to go through my fence. So does that make sense? Good. Now let's talk about fans. Now, when it's in a slide room, we need to help it. We need to put fans in. So let's show you where the fans go. Here is the back view of a refrigerator. Here we have the condenser fin that I just drew. It has the fins. This is the the fins that the air has to go through. And then while we're at it, I'll just take red and just, it needs to have that little baffle to have it curl out. Okay. And then the baffle to have it touch the baffle. You want it to touch this. You don't want the air to take a shortcut. That's kind of important. Um, and then we're going to go with black again. And then this is where we have our little yeehaw. It looks like something you want to drive around in. And then they have this little tube that comes down here. Here's your boiler on this side. Water is in this vessel right here. And let's see, the water seeks its own level. So it's going to go through here. All this is full of water and it's going to seek its own level. And that's where, I'm running out of colors here. That's where our heating element is going to go. The heating element and the burner, if you're doing the LP, the burners down in here, you want the heating element and the burner in this liquidy part, okay? In my instance, green, uh, to create the bubbling thing. So that's why the heating element is below the water line. All right. Your fans, I've, I've seen fans up here. They don't go up there. I've seen fans down here. They don't go down there. 
fans go right in the center, right in this area right in here. So you might have two fans right here. If your refrigerator is in a slide room, you must have fans. And the thermostat is typically mounted right here on the side. So you've got, you're picking to pick up your 12 volt down here. You're gonna go up here to this thermostat. And when the thermostat gets to 130 degrees, in other words, when this fin right here gets to 130 degrees, it's gonna turn these fans on. And when the fin drops to 105 degrees, it's gonna turn the fans off. So this is the opening, this opening right here on the bottom, okay? Then you have another opening right here, okay, on the top. And we wanna block this part off right here to not let the air go. No, 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 no air. We wanna force it to go through these uh, condenser fins at the top. But air's not gonna, it's gonna look at this and it's gonna say, I'm not going in there, that's too much work. So that's what we need the fans for. Your fans must be working. Uh, there is a third fan kit you can get and it mounts on this absorber coil down here. And so you could have up to three fans. But whatever you do, don't blow the fan on the boiler because you're kidding yourself. The boiler needs to get to temperature and you're trying to cool it off. So make your fan above the boiler. And the goal is to get the, the, the heat drawn in and forced through to make that right hand turn. Okay, so I hope all of that makes sense. So this is a bit of a different video for me. Normally I bring you along on videos that I'm actually fixing something and it's the discovery and it's like the crime scene that we have to put it back together again. This one, I had some time and I really wanted to add value to you because I know we're going into camping season and it's important that your refrigerator is working well. If you like these types of videos and you want to learn more about your refrigerator, just subscribe to the channel and every time we throw a new one out there, you're going to get a little ding, ding, ding or however it comes to you, however you have it set up. And um, happy camper, say my RV works. Till next time, this is Darren signing off.